Over time, many great engines have been invented for the benefit of mankind, which are almost impossible to start directly by human hands as well as the opposite of this modern technology. In view of this, the starter motor was invented to start the engine. The starter motor is a powerful electric motor for starting the engine. Do you know what happens when you turn your car's ignition key? As the key is turned, the starter motor turns and the engine starts. A starter motor requires a lot of electricity to operate. Is a lot of electricity enough? Moreover, what technologies are behind it? Today, we'll discuss in detail how the starter motor works in this video. So without further delay, let's jump into the main video. The starter motor has a pinion, which meshes the engine flywheel with teeth and turns the crankshaft. It is a pre-engaged type starter motor, which is used in all modern vehicles. It uses an electric motor to provide torque to the crankshaft. A solenoid is used to supply power to the motor. That means to switch the current flow to the motor on and off. The circuit design is very simple, as you can see. A solenoid is an electromagnet, which requires a small amount of electricity to activate. When the ignition switch is turned on, current flows through the coil of the solenoid, causing the core within the coil to run back along the coil and connect two copper plates known as the plunger slides. This completes the circuit from the battery to the motor and current flows to the motor and the motor starts rotating. When the current to the solenoid is turned off, the cord returns to its original position under spring pressure and the motor is disconnected from the battery. We may wonder why solenoid and contactor are used instead of direct connection of motor and battery, as the circuit design is complicated by adding solenoid and contactor. The main reason for not connecting the battery and motor directly through a switch is that the motor is very powerful and requires a lot of electricity. The ignition switch would need to be unusually large to handle this amount of electricity, which is against modern technology and would require very thick wiring from the battery to the switch to the motor. When connecting power directly to the motor, if a relatively small switch is used, the ignition switch will easily burn out because it cannot carry such a large amount of current. And the entire wire will also burn. The motor can also be damaged during this accident. Now, the question is, why is there a possibility of fire if you use a small switch instead of using a big switch? The main reason for this is that when we humans turn the ignition switch, there will be a small amount of vibration. And due to this vibration, the spark will be generated immediately and the fire will catch easily, as a lot of electricity flows. To avoid this danger, solenoid is used which is operated by a small amount of electricity. Whenever current flows through the solenoid, the core within it moves back and forth with no vibration occurring and the copper plates instantly connect. Because of such smooth connections, no sparks are created and this huge amount of electricity can flow silently. That means we can control a large amount of electricity by flowing a small amount of electricity through solenoid. Also, another important function of the solenoid is to help the pinion slide and engage the pinion with the flywheel before the motor is started. As the pinion slides toward the flywheel, it rotates slightly on its own axis, as you can see. This rotation is achieved using helical splines, which helps the pinion mesh with the flywheel more conveniently. If the pinion does not rotate while sliding, and if the teeth of the pinion and the flywheel become aligned, both may collide and cause any accidents. Since the pinion rotates on its own axis while sliding, the pinion changes its position immediately, even though both teeth are along, and can easily engage the flywheel without any accidents. The core of the solenoid is designed in such a way that when the pinion engages with the flywheel, the opposite side copper plates engage. That means the motor and battery circuit is completed and the motor starts rotating. Now, the question is, when electricity flows in the solenoid coil, why does the core in it run backwards? So let's look at the basic physics behind the solenoid. We know that when current flows through a wire, a magnetic field is generated around it. And when the wire is twisted to form a coil, the strength of the magnetic field increases many times. The side of the coil from which current flows is the south pole and the opposite side is converted to the north pole. As you can see, we make a coil by twisting a wire and place an iron bar inside the coil. 
Now let current flow through the coil. You can see that the iron bar has moved to the center of the coil as power is applied. Again, if we place the bar on the opposite side and let the current flow, then the same work is done. This means that no matter what side of the iron bar is placed in the coil, as the current flows, the bar always moves to the center of the coil. The main reason for centering is that when current flows through a coil, the magnetic field strength is greatest at the center of the coil. Now, if we attach a spring to the iron bar and apply current to the coil, it will move to the center under the influence of the magnetic field. And whenever the current is stopped, the bar will return to its original position due to the pressure of the spring. By applying the same technique, this clever design of the starter motor is done. The greater the number of turns of wire in the coil, the greater the strength of the magnetic field. We can notice that the pinion is considerably smaller than the flywheel. Usually, the gear ratio of the flywheel and pinion ranges from 10 to 1 to 15 to 1. As a result, it is possible to achieve high torque. Let's know more details. Although starter motors are very powerful, they are not capable of generating enough power to start the engine. As the motor starts rotating, there is less rotational energy or torque in it. As speed increases, torque also increases. For this, we can use a mechanism whereby the motor will rotate at high speed, but the output speed will be low. This will cause the motor to rotate at high speed, generating a lot of torque and transferring that torque to the output. Here, you can see two gears connected together. The input and output gears have the same rotational speed since both have the same number of teeth. The input and output torques are also always equal. Now, if we increase the number of teeth of the output gear, our objective will be achieved. If we double the number of teeth on the output gear, if the input gear rotates twice, the output gear rotates only once. For example, here the number of teeth of input gear is 12, and the number of teeth of output gear is 120. Hence, the gear ratio is 10 to 1. So, if the input gear rotates 10 times, the output gear rotates only once. That means that the output gear will turn slowly but with great power, since the motor is turning at high speed. The torque generated from this gear reduction is still not sufficient to start the engine. So, a planetary gear set is installed to further increase the torque. With low weight and small space, planetary gears are incredibly efficient for a large gear reduction. Its gear ratio is 9 to 1. This is sun gear, ring gear, planetary gear set. And this is a career. The sun gear is the input gear. The ring gear remains stationary. And the output is the carrier made up of three planetary gears. We know gear ratio equals number of teeth of output gear divided by number of teeth of input gear. Here, the number of teeth of sun gear or input gear is 11. And the number of teeth in each of the three output gears is 33 for a total of 99. Hence, gear ratio is 99 over 11. Enough torque is generated by combined gear reduction. Now, the starter motor is ready to start the engine. However, there is still a problem, and it is important to separate the pinion from the flywheel as soon as the engine is started, to prevent back drive of the motor. This is done by releasing the ignition switch, which de-energizes the solenoid and returns the pinion. But if the operator fails to release the ignition switch as soon as the engine starts, the pinion by the flywheel will turn too fast and the motor will be damaged. To solve this problem, one-way clutch is used. A number of rollers are placed between the outer and inner races of the one-way clutch. The outer race is connected to the carrier and the inner race to the pinion. As the outer race starts to rotate, the rollers lock the outer and inner races. This causes the full power of the motor to be transferred to the pinion gear, which turns the flywheel. On the contrary, when the pinion starts rotating by the flywheel due to the engine starting, that means the inner race starts rotating. The rollers also start rotating in the opposite direction and move backwards. Since there is enough space at the back, the inner and outer races are free. And the inner race rotates freely without rotating the outer race. Hope you understand how a starter motor works. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon.